Hello and welcome to the Knit Girls. This is episode 279. I'm Laura, also known as Lala. I'm Leslie, also known as You Don't Call Me Less. It's December, Sunday, December the 13th. It is. 2015. I feel like time goes faster as I get older. Man, I feel like it should still be October. Like, Halloween should not have come. Yeah. And it's long gone. Yeah. Um... I also feel like I should have started my holiday knitting a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, I don't really do holiday knitting. I've only got a couple of gifts that I'm sending out to people. And, um, well, I'll say a couple. I think there's four total. And two of them have mm -hmm. been done for a while. And it's just that I finished them and I thought, oh, this so-and-so would like this. And so that's yeah. where it's going. There you go. Um, so knitting. As of yesterday, I had 21 projects to finish before Christmas, but now I am down to, let's think, um, like 14. That's not bad. Yeah, all I know is Laura texted me, generally on Sundays, one of, we put it off recording until one of us finally gives in and is like, okay, are we recording today? <laughs> <laughs> um, and That's pretty much the first Oh, I forgot to put something. In. We, um, keep going. Laura texted me and said, well, do you have any crafting? And I'm like, not really. I didn't do a whole lot this week. She's like, okay. So I, that to me, that meant she didn't either. And so I logged into the show notes <laughs> to put mine in. I have two lines of text and Laura has like three paragraphs worth of stuff. So it's going to be the Laura show today. A paragraph of finished objects. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't you start with your knitting? What are you working on? I'm just working on one thing currently on the needles because I've finished everything else that was on the needles. And I still have a lot to do, but um, my needles, well, I didn't finish it. Like, obviously, there's needles everywhere around here, but <laughs> I've been working actively on. Um, I only have one thing. So it is, I'm kind of, I just started a row. This is the Wild Goose Chalette. It is a pattern by the lovely Paula of Paula Emmons. Um, Beasley. Um, she is of the Knitting Pipeline. There we go. Words. They are good. I've had so much caffeine today, too. Mm. Which is wonderful. I even made a special trip to Starbucks, which I typically do not do on Sundays. So, but, explain to me what the whole red cup can... Like, there's a bunch of controversy over the red it, cups? It just... It's kind of like the... Um, I don't whole, drink like, coffee. So don't, don't say holiday, say Christmas type thing. It uh -huh. goes with that. So does it they say... Didn't, they didn't put any symbols on their cup this year. It's just a plain red gradient. Oh. And that's causing controversy? If you would like other things to be on their cup, yes. Okay. All right. It's a political thing. I'm not really going to get into it. But okay. um, anyway... I've been enjoying a lot of Starbucks because they've been doing like a Stardash thing. So I've earned three free coffees in the past three and weeks. And how many drinks have you had to I'm order? not telling you. <laughs> <laughs> it's a secret. <laughs> a lot. But anyway, this is my um, Wild Goose Chalet. It's a great pattern. It goes super fast. I took it with me on a field trip this week. Um, I did testing this week. So it is just about at the point where... Um, it can start these eyelet, um, this lace motif that comes at the bottom. So it's at almost that count, if not past that count. I haven't counted. But I'm going to work on it on the podcast for a while, and then we're going to go from there. Um, this is Shalimar Airy. That's what it looks like. We have a skein to give away, but mm -hmm. not today. We have something else to give away today. Um, so this is the yarn it is a mohair and you can really start to see the more i work with it um because mohair likes to kind of fuzz up and this is a single yarn so you can kind of i don't know if you can see can you see the fibers at the top a little bit a little bit of a fuzzy halo yeah and a little bit of a fuzzy halo so and it gets toted everywhere with me it's my purse knitting right now so it is majority of it is um merino a superwash merino, and then 10% is silk and 20% is mohair. Um, 
And this is the whale's tail colorway. It's really, really pretty. I'm enjoying how it's working up. And um, I told you last week that my kids are learning to knit, mm -hmm. like in art class, which they are really enjoying. Um, but I'm not getting over there as much as I would like because I have a job that I have to do too. Um, but like during testing, it was just like semester exams that I was proctoring so I could sit there and knit and watch them and walk around and knit and watch them. So um, I was doing the edge shelving books. I was doing both those things. But um, as I was knitting, the kids that are in art are like, Miss Linneman, you knit fast. <laughs> that's well, what 20 years of practice will do for you yeah it's more than that it's all subjective to like i knit fast to them but they don't know people who knit much faster than me so um they were very impressed with how speedily i knit how quickly i knit but that's all super subjective so that is all i have on the needles um that it can be actively worked on right now i'm about to start a couple more pint size pines tonight because I'd like to get my forest complete. I have people coming over and I want my house to look party. So. Something you don't often hear on a knitting podcast. I'd like to get my forest complete. <laughs> You'll see my pines in a second. But that's all I have. You have some things that you were working on. Two things, right? Yeah, I've only really worked on two things. Um, neither of which were the new sweaters that I cast on this month. Um, okay. I just haven't been in a mind space to work on sweaters. So See, I'm in like an accessory small thing mind space. I'm not really even in a knitting mind space. Like I really want to weave or cross stitch or embroider. That's kind of where I want to be right now. Yeah. But That's I awesome. still, when I'm reading at night, I still will knit because it's, you know, I don't have to look at it. Yeah. Um, so the first thing that I worked on is the Citron Grand. Um, is that what it's called? Grand yeah. Citron, whatever it is. Citron. Basically, it's just a Citron bigger. Um, so this is what it looks like. It's sort of a ruched shawl. Yeah. Made with simple increases and decreases. That was a free pattern on Nitty a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. and then she increased the sizes. Yeah, so the regular initial size is still free on Nitty. Yeah, it's um, like 400, and you could probably figure out how to do the large. You probably could. I was just being super lazy. Um, sometimes I feel like figuring things out, and sometimes I just want somebody to yeah. tell me what to do. No, I, I've bought socking caps before because I was like, I can totally swatch this and figure it out. But... Or I can just <laughs> pull the numbers off of here. Yeah, I can pay somebody else for their hard work. And Bud's Handy Book of Patterns is super awesome for yeah. stuff like that. Too. So I'm using some hand spun um, that I spun the first year of Spinzilla. This is um, it's a loop that. bat. It's a single yeah. ply that I fold. And that's because, um, oh, Spinzilla the first year, plying did not count. Right. So I didn't ply. I had so many full bobbins, and then I plied off of them real fast to figure out my yardage. Yeah. Well, that's, um, this, I have like 900-ish yards of this. So, and I had initially, I was knitting a Pebble Beach Chalette, but it required more brain power than I felt like, which was stupid, really, because she you just check everything off. But I don't know. I wasn't feeling Helen it. Helen Stewart is the person who wrote Pebble Beach, and she does this checklist system was that brilliant. is genius. Yeah. And she's got a couple of things that I'm going to knit, hopefully, before the yeah, holidays. Yeah, half the patterns in her knit vent, I want to knit. So, And that's pretty good, because usually in a collection, 50% is, is high for me. But I want to knit half of the items that she put out, so... Stuff. She just finished releasing her knit bag collection. Yeah, which is six new patterns. Um, so I knit one repeat on the. It's sorry, my needles are not doing what I would like for them to do. So I knit <laughs> one repeat of this, which you're not really. Aside from the fact that the color darkens, you can't really tell. It's I knit another ruched section. So you're you're using a loop bump, which is a gradient. Mm-hmm. So it'll continue to get darker as I go. I could have started with the dark and gone to the light, but there wasn't a whole lot of the light, and there's more of the dark, so I think it'll look better that way. I'm using size US 6 4.0 millimeter needles. I'm using my signatures. Um, I prefer those especially with lace because the tips are super duper pointy. Mm -hmm. um, and with a single, I definitely want to be careful not to... Um, split the single? Split it, yeah. 
Because yeah. it's I still could split it even though it's fold. In some spots it's a little fuzzier than others. So um, this I've been knitting on not much, a couple hours here and there. And that's in one of my Blinger string bags. Cute. And I like your bags a lot. My other is also in a Blinger string bag. Oh, I like that Pac-Man bag. Uh, I'm knitting with a Gail's Art sock blank. Look at that. Did you see her ad in Shut Up and Take My Money that she put up today? I did not. You need to go I and look at it. Of- no, you need to go and look at it right now because I'm going to beat everybody to those new sock blanks that she put out because they are... They're, they don't go on sale until tomorrow, or I would have bought them already. They oh. are gorgeous. Now you're telling people about it, and you won't get them. Oh, no. I will get them. I will F5 and beat everybody, or I will whine. Oh, she, um, so she's doing extreme soft. Yeah, things. they're like graffiti-ish, yeah, sort of cool. mod art looking. They're really cool. So I'm using um, one of the ones from her Holiday Sock Club. Yeah. Uh, Laura had one. I think we gave one away, and then this is the other one. Yep. Um, we I will... gave a whole subscription to her club away. Yes. Um, knitting ribbing in white is really boring. But once I started getting to the color, it got more interesting. So um, I'm just starting to pull from the tops of these stars and snowflakes here. So... I've got the blue and bits of the pink and purple in there. So it's still not the most exciting thing. I think it's going to turn out gorgeous. But I really like the speckled look of it. So, and it's, you know, I knit it while I'm reading. It's just stockinette. I'm doing a very simple 72 stitch pattern in the round. These are going to be for me. Um, makes me happy. So, and I'm using 2.25 millimeter high, highest sharps. Um, which is a U.S. size one. And that's all that I am currently working on. Would you like to go first with your finished objects? Or would you like me to? It's probably better if you do so that then I can talk for a minute after your 10-minute okay. spiel of finished objects. So okay. I can feel like I'm contributing to the show. <laughs> okay. We can do that. You're totally contributing to the show. <laughs> like, you have finished objects, too. All right, I'm going to kind of, like, put my headphones... I don't know that they'll stay that way, my crazy... Look, I'm super, uh, super cool. Um, Because I have three hats to show you guys. So the first I was working on last week, it is the Skelter Hat by Willie Wormhead. Why don't you just unplug for the period of time that you're going to... I don't like doing that. Look, it'll stay. Um, Because I don't like the echo. Anyway, so this is the... (laughs) Your suggestion has been denied. Yes. (laughs) Um, this is the Skelter hat by Willy Wormhead. It was her mystery hat this year. Mm, so pretty. Damn, that yarn so, just makes it. It's so gorgeous. I really, really like it. So this is, um, I'm just going to put my headphones up and down. So this hat is out of a worsted weight. It is out of Cyborg's Craft Room Digital, which is her worsted weight in the Space Princess colorway. This is her website. Yep, she, her, she's on Etsy, the Cyborgs yep. Craft Room. It's uh, Megan Black. Yep. Um, you can kind of see it down there at the bottom. She's maybe. one of our SSK vendors. She is. So I really like this. Um, I really like this hat. It's got this cable that goes across. And because I used a uh, very good yarn that had a very short color repeat, you can actually see it, which mm-hmm. is fun. Um, it has the split brim at the back. So it's garter stitch, and um, then after the garter stitch brim, you begin working in the round. Um, I am torn on whether or not to add a pom-pom. Don't, and give it to me. So, um, I don't know. There's this cool, we'll get into the faux fur pom-poms, but I have a purple faux fur pom-pom that I think might be perfect with it. But I like it as it is. I I, do like the split brim hats. I'm going to have to get that color. What is that color again? Space Princess. I'm going to have to look and see if she's got it. This is a gift for someone. So it is, I'm going to ask them maybe if they prefer a pom-pom or not. And then. Well, I'm going to so- go ahead and tell you now. I don't want a pom-pom on it. <laughs> you said it's for you. <laughs> it better not be because I'm going to buy a skein of that color. <laughs> I'm going to pull Jessica on you. 
Don't buy a skein of that color, jerk. Maybe I want it. Why are you ruining Christmas? <laughs> it's the habit of mine. I ruin all the things. It is for you. Shut your mouth. <laughs> oh. Anyway, I was trying to like play it off like it was silly for someone else. Jerk. Don't get that color away. <laughs> so this goes back. So our friend Jessica, um, I bought a whole bunch of yarn in a Black Friday sale and I was showing her what I, I was texting her what I got and she's like no don't buy that colorway and I was like I already bought it and um she was like email her right now and <laughs> tell her you do not want the colorway and so I was like but I do want it <laughs> I do want it like, I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. And she's like, jerk, I knit you socks out of that colorway return. And then after I emailed the lady and I'm like, I'm so sorry. My friend told me she knit me socks out of this already. I was going to knit. I've been lusting after this colorway for a whole year. So after I do all that, Jessica goes, oh, no, that's not the colorway I knit your socks out of. They are similar, though. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, she doesn't so then, have that colorway in stock right now. Dang it. Good, because you're not, you don't need to get it. So I knit you this hat. Such a jerk. I am a jerk. All right. The next hat, which is not for you, <laughs> someone else, a jerk, is the Everyday Brew. This is a hat um, out of a collection that we reviewed a couple weeks ago. The tea collection by Claire Devon. This is um, the Everyday Brew Hat. It is out of the tea collection by Claire Devine, which we gave rave reviews to mm -hmm. because the hats were very, very pretty. And actually, it comes with two cowl patterns, too. Um, so this is a pretty simplistic pattern. I think it took me three to four hours to knit the whole hat. Wow. It is out of, now my hair is all wonky, Another Crafty Girl. This is her chunky base, or her merino bulky base, excuse me. And it is in the protectors colorway. Both these, this skein and the cyborg craft room skein, I bought at SSK. I'm using up SSK <laughs> stash. Good for you, honey. Good for you. So, um, and she's got some stuff, colorways in stock right now, but I love her merino bulky. It is so squishy. I knit just a hat for the, out of this um, earlier this year. So, and it was just perfect with the variegation yeah, and beautiful. the pattern. It has not been blocked yet. These two have not been blocked yet. All right. The third hat is still kind of damp. I've, it's been like overcast and rainy, but 75 here today, which is so weird. Um, but this is another hat out of the, um, the, tea collection by claire divine Ooh. i wanted to block it though so you could see it that's with the one of the ones that i wanted to knit well you should knit it because it's pretty awesome um i wanted to block it though because the lace really opens up and it Ooh. makes it a little bit more slouchy i didn't do the slouchy version on either hat because i was worried about running out of yarn mm -hmm. so but by blocking it it's a lot slouchier um i just laid it flat to block i do have a glass head that i use for blocking a lot of hats but it wasn't, I didn't like how the back part of the lace was blocking um, with the hat head. So, and she suggests blowing up a balloon, which is a wonderful way of blocking yeah. hats. Um, so both that hat and, so that was out of Marina Mecca in the Paris Sky colorway. When Loopy, you had their Black Friday sale, I bought like four different colorways of this yarn. Specifically for... Specifically for the tea collection yeah, hats. And you're using yep. it. I'm very proud of you. Yep, look at that. I'm using up stuff I bought. And and stash from the summer. That's three skeins out of my stash. That's pretty cool. Although there's a lot more that came. <laughs> I was going to say, we haven't even gotten to the, like, even in out yet, so. <laughs> no, we're not even. Um, I don't think even in out's ever going to happen for me, so... <laughs> <laughs> really, really pretty. But these hats from the tea collection used size eight for the ribbing and then ten and a half for the lace part. I did not have size ten and a half double points, so I just used ten for the couple rows at the top that I needed. And then I had a coupon for Joanne's and I went out and bought ten and a halves because um, they were four dollars. The clovers. Because that's 
seem to be perfect. Um, I knit all of these on Addy 16 inch circulars too, in case you want to know. Okay, so next on, oh, I knocked everything down. Next on my list are some pint sized pines. So I didn't have corks because I don't drink wine because I'm allergic to sulfides. And I know they're sulfide free wine, but I'm not a wine drinker. So I had to buy a bag of corks from Amazon. Oh, wow. <laughs> And you can buy a bag of pre-used corks. These are real corks. Um, Look, Sutter Home, <laughs> only the finest. How much did uh, you pay for a bag of corks? Like $8. Oh, for okay. 50. That's not bad. This one is, I don't know, Dada? I can't read it, but yeah. It's very funny. Okay. So I am using scraps and odds and ends. And this one is Chateau de Pin Pinty. I don't know. So anyway, corks. Um, this is a pattern by the folks at Simply Notable. Julie from Simply Notable. Notable. She's got tons of free patterns. That's where I've done the tea bag cozies before. If you are looking for a great last minute gift and you want to give a gift card, she's got these cute little gift cardigan things that you can knit. Aww. So she's got a lot and um, mug cozies and a lot of great gift knits for free. But these are pint sized pines. What they are, they just go over corks. They make a cute little forest. So I'm using up some odds and ends. So this was out of my scrap bin. Um, I knit them on size two. I started with my signature size twos and it was splitting the yarn, like, cause you're knitting at a fairly tight gauge. Mm -hmm. Um, it was splitting the yard a little bit. So I went to some lantern moon size twos. Um, she calls for threes or twos. So I just went down to the smallest that I possibly could. All right. So Malabrigo Merino Worsted. I have no idea on the colorway. That's left over from a baby hat that I met. Two baby hats that I met. Um, this is Rowan Felted Tweed. This I had a full ball of, but that green was just so perfect. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to try a DK weight. So the first one was Worsted. This is DK. And then this is Hand Spun from um, Stash Dash. And it was, well, not Stash Dash, from um, Spinzilla. Spinzilla. I had spun some. Um, English Ivy Hobbledehoy Batlings. And so because it was, this is actually the first one I did, because it was more woolen spun, it didn't show up the cable very well. I can see it pretty well, though. I mean, very light. So it works, but um, I decided after that point to go with more commercial yarn. I'll probably try some more um, hand spun, but not woolen spun, if that makes sense. I can so see I have that. three little pines done. And then to go with them, because every forest needs some animals. <laughs> we have a sheep in a sweater? Yes. So this is a pattern by Susan B. Anderson. Um, they are these very cute little sweaters, and they go over these cutouts from, that Juniper Moon was selling um, to raise funds for, I think, is it Heifer International? Heifer International, yeah. Um, so I bought a, a bag of like 50 of them. Oh, really? Yes. You need to because... send me some. Why are you ruining Christmas? <laughs> Jerk. <laughs> I got you a T-Rex. Okay, I'm going to put ruining Christmas as our title. <laughs> I'm going to knit him a sweater, too. I'm going to send you a T-Rex and a sweater. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Totally going in my cubicle. Um, here's the deal with the T-Rexes, though. They don't fit in the little stands. So they come with these little stands. Well, you can buy little stands for them, so I bought the little stands, too. But the T-Rexes, his feet are weird. Well, they're like that. <laughs> so they don't fit in the stands. So he's kind of... The bunnies don't really fit in the stands, anyways, either. So this is a pattern for the little wee sweaters. And some people just wrap them in yarn. Also cute. Yeah, yeah, if I run out of time, your T Rex is just <laughs> gone. Um poor sad T Rex. <laughs> They'll be cozy. <laughs> They'll be hand spun. Um, so this first one is uh this was yarn I died many, many years oh, ago. Oh yes, it's the Wilma of um Kramer Wilma base. Because I uh, have a skein of that in my drawer. Yeah. So this is leftovers from um, the original pattern. It was a hank of yarn club. Is it Persephone's Return? I don't remember the pattern. Yeah, it's a pattern that I designed to go with a club and I dyed the yarn. And so there's the first wee little lamb. 
And then there's a bunny. <laughs> this is more like a sweater dress. So I used that same lamb pattern with a bunny. And this is a colorway from another, or not another crafty girl, Median color. But I did the um, scarf that had the attached edging that was loops. I can't remember. Anyway, that was little scraps. All these oh, are yeah. the, scraps. Um, the one that Beck made it. Yeah. Knitting at SSK. Clincher. Clincher, yeah. And then this. Oh, that's pretty, too. Is another crafty girl. In... Honky Brewster. Honky Brewster, yeah. Yep. That was left over from my hope. So three little animals and sweaters. Let's make a little forest. <laughs> <laughs> And then they have, like, I have llamas, so I have the little lambs, and then I have yearlings, and then I have the big sheep, and then there's alpacas, and, or llamas, whichever, I don't know. It's hard to tell the difference on a little cutout. Yeah, cut out, yeah. And then there's T-Rexes. <laughs> and I bought extra T-Rexes. Because <laughs> it only came with two T-Rexes, oh, and that's man. not enough for my life. Um... So I'll make a little loop on his sweater so you can hang him in his, your cubicle. Thank you. So he can be chilling like a villain. Um, so those were all knit on size one needles. She recommends twos, but we all know that I'm loose. And so um, they were knit on size one using assorted scraps. And then last but not least, my grandmother um, at Saf was walking around and she is not really an editor. She crochets, um, she cuts up tool and crochets like scrubbies to scrub your dishes mm. with, which yeah. is awesome. She knit when, <laughs> she'll tell you, I knit when I had to during World War II. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> so she'll knit, she knit socks for soldiers during World War II. But that, that would was... cure anybody, I'm sure. Um, yeah, she's not a big knitter. So, she asked, she saw people walking around with fingerless mitts, and so she asked for a pair of fingerless mitts for Christmas. And who can tell Grandma no? no Grandma ever. gets hand mitts every Christmas. Yeah. So last year she got a cow. This year she really wanted fingerless mitts. Ooh, so. pretty. Thank you. These are Spiced Cocoa by Laura Alnor. Alor? Alor, I believe. Alor. Alor. Mm -hmm. um, they were knit uh, using Tosh DK. I don't know if they're different. No, they're not different lengths. I counted rows. Um, really, really simple knit. Knit them during the Steelers game today. I made modifications. Um, the pattern is not... All the information is there, so it's not poorly written, but the way it's relayed did not work with my brain. Does that make sense? Yeah. Sometimes, like, when I read through stuff, A, I'm knitting fast while listening to a Steelers game. Yeah. So, probably my fault and not hers. But um, you were supposed to actually have, like, six repeats of this pattern on the cuff. Yeah, I read two. And so I did two. <laughs> which it stays up. Um, but it would make a little bit of a longer cuff, which is what I would love. But my grandmother won't care. Like, that's probably perfect for her. She just wants them for when she's operating her vehicle. And she wanted them this length. So the first mod is, I messed up here. But I did it consistently on both. Because <laughs> I noticed it once I started the left hand mitt. They are um, done hand, like once. Mirror. Yeah, they're mirrored. So you do kind of have to do a right hand and a left hand. Luckily, I did that correctly. <laughs> Although I did try to start them both as right hand. <laughs> but, you know, once you get to the coffee, you're like, oh, no the same on both um what else did i change oh so the thumb's really interesting you actually knit this gusset thumb i love gusset thumbs they're my favorite fitting mm -hmm. thumbs and then you knit the thumb you use a different set of needles to knit the thumb and then you go back oh so it's not you don't like, come and finish it after you do no that it's done as you do it mm -hmm. super smart and then you pick up stitches here and there's no hole sweet i know i really like it um, this was only supposed to be five rows right here, and then that, so probably like an inch shorter, but she wanted them to her knuckles, so that is, I made them longer, I made them two inches here before I started a decrease round, and then did the edging at the top, which is supposed to be the same as the edging at the bottom, which it is not. <laughs> same pattern, <laughs> different number of repeats. Yep, so, um, very, very cute. I liked them. 
I'll probably knit them for me. So these were knit um, magic looped on some Knitter's Pride needles. You magic looped. I did magic loop because everything else was done on DPNs and I didn't feel like using DPNs okay. anymore. I had like, also I had like, my hair was up earlier. I had like seven sets of DPNs <laughs> all stuck in my head. And Humberto kept attacking them. So I was, I had to make that. And then I left the house and I can always tell when I leave the house because I bumped them on the top of the car. Yeah. Um, so I never like become that crazy lady who goes out in public with them usually because I, I feel them when I bump them on my head. I do the same thing with pens though too, which drives my hairdresser crazy. Um, so these are the Spice Cocoa Mitts by Laura A. A Lore, we're going to say. Mm -hmm. um, I used Hosh DK, and I cannot remember the colorway. It's one that I bought years and years and years ago. Um, but I have enough left for at least another pair of mitts, probably. Oh, yeah. Or a hat. So those will go out in the mail tomorrow, and she will be super duper excited. And I might send the lapsing hat with them. I haven't decided yet. But then I'm creating more work for myself, so maybe I won't. That's the problem with me and Christmas, and I'm like, you know what would be awesome? If I did 21 more projects. Yes. And then, because I'll get, like, the original number of projects that I was going to do done, and then I'll just keep adding, and it just gets crazy. Um, so, that is how my finished objects. Is I did a Ravelry pages for every single one of them. You are such a good person. But I haven't put up... Um, pictures on all of them yet so and some of them are just like empty like i cast on this project yeah but at least they're in my projects so that is about it for me would you like to go sure now that i've been talking for forever <laughs> neither of my finished objects are knitting um they are miscellany crafts for me i love it uh, so the first I was working on last week, it's the uh, um, fabric that I was weaving. So I finished it and cut it off the loom. It's always a fun part when you get to the end and you can cut. And then did you hem stitch it or no. did you? Okay, no, I because you can use it for sewing, so right. you could actually just sew and then cut off the. Mm -hmm. So I I tied them into a fringe for now so that everything stays. Um, but when I start cutting it up for fabric, I'll you know, I'll put a stay stitch on the ends. Um, I'll turn my stitch length down really low to like a millimeter or two and then stitch along the edge before I cut. Yeah, like you were with steaking. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is um, just some fabric that I wove. It could be a scarf, but that's not how I'm going to use it. Um, Did you give it a wash yet? No. Okay. Don't no. things change when you wash them when you leave? It'll even out, like the edges here that are sort of bumpy and uneven. Uh -huh. It'll even those out. But aside from that, it shouldn't change it too much. Um, okay. So the warp, which is the yarn that was going up and down, is Leading Men Fiber Arts in the Let's Hear It for the Girls. And uh -huh. then the weft, which is going from left to right, is Great. another Crafty Girls um, gamut yeah. in the sparkle colorway like uh, in the sparkle base. sparkle base that's pretty yeah so i'm gonna use it as fabric for pouches or something i can see where i skipped a thread in several different places i hate that there oh and you cut it no one will notice i do see it there but yeah. i wouldn't have noticed unless you told it just me. makes it handmade i mean i'm yeah. not worried about it um, i'm sure there's other parts of the scarf where i did that too so how many skein, you use one skein of each? One skein of each, yes. And I had a little bit of the, um, I would say I probably had 30 yards of the warp, the leading men fiber your works. own T-Rex sweaters out of I that. Could. And then I probably had about 15 yards of the gamut left. Um, I did not plan ahead and use any sort of calculation. So I could have very easily run out. But um, you did okay. generally speaking, I'm able to weave um, a fingering weight scarf out of one of, for the warp and one for the weave. And the uh, warp I had to start with, I had more yardage anyway. So. Cool beans. So this fabric will be turned into 
So it will be pieces. sewn. Into yeah, it will be sewn into um, pouches or something similar. I haven't completely decided yet. I just wanted to weave the fabric. Cool. And then the other is a little embroidered panel. And I got the pattern from um, Craftsy. They sell, like Etsy, they sell PDF patterns. Uh-huh. And um, it's pigs, because I love pigs. So yes. it's just a cute little embroidered... Oh! Isn't that adorable? That would be super cute on, like, the bottom of a tea cloth or... Yeah, just well, great. my only worry for putting it on something that would get a lot of everyday use is that um, it can be washed for sure, but I probably wouldn't throw it in a washer just because it's yeah. got, like french knots for the eyes and these lazy daisy stitches for the um yeah. so i don't want those to get too manhandled um but i have an idea of what i'm going to put it on I, ha I just haven't quite done it yet but it was it was a lot of fun i did learn that i do not enjoy making french knots at all i don't mind french you know who the queen of french knots carrie is. jelby yes <laughs> yes but I did in get fact, in. Humberto ate my balloon off my stitch marker, uh -huh. and she offered to refill one for me. Oh. <laughs> like, add a little bit of felt there. Well, I got in a lot of practice with um, stem stitch, which is sort of, I guess it's also called, like, outline stitch. Um, like, the green. That's pretty. And the brown is also outline stitch. Uh, whereas um, the pigs are just simple back stitch. So cool. I got in practice with a couple of techniques that I um, hadn't before, and I, I purchased a class on Craftsy um, called, I think it's called like Design It, Embroider It, or something like that. It was 20 bucks, I think, and the lady gives great tutorials on how to do all these stitches. So, oh, cool. um, And this is just on some simple linen. I'm going to yeah. make it a part of something else. Again, yeah. just haven't quite decided what yeah. what yet. So I'm I'm getting all of the like ingredients. I just haven't decided what the main dish is gonna be. So that's cool though. I like it. So Super that's cute. It. That's all my finished objects. I don't have any spinning this week. Um, I have spinning, but you know what? I didn't bring it in here. So I got a new little mini spindle from Acreworks. Oh, I cool. scored one in an update, so I've been playing with that um, on my field trip on Tuesday. He put on Instagram that he was going to update. Oh, so you bought it on the field trip. Okay. Yeah. Um, I did not get the purple one, which was my first choice, but I did get a black snowflake. They're like real teeny tiny, like 10 grams at most. Cool. Oh. Um, so that came and I played with that a little bit. I have an Into the World little sample pack that they sent me. So I'm spinning some of their Aurora Borealis Silk Merino Bamboo Blend. That they like, they send you like five grams. Mm -hmm. That's all that'll really fit on there comfortably anyways. Yeah. So small. So it's gonna be fun. And then I could ply it and then it could become a dinosaur sweater. It could. You never know what those little bits and bobs end up being. <laughs> Seriously. Oh, I'm so ridiculous. That's like we the best have... use for like leftover stuff ever. Oh, yeah. Um, we do have a book to review. It mm -hmm. is Spilly Jane Mittens by Spilly Jane. This was sent to us for review by the lovely folks at Cooperative Press. Yep. Cooperative Press is no longer selling books on their website. So if you want a hardcover, like a paperback version of this book, you do have to buy it on Amazon. Mm -hmm. This morning it was around $25. But you can also buy it on um, for a digital download, which is what Leslie and I have, on Ravelry. Mm -hmm. So it is a little bit slow on both our tablets, just flipping through pages real yeah. fast. Um, but that could be our tablets being older and not brand new yeah. versus the speed of the book. So this is Spilly Jane Mittens. For those of you who are not familiar with Spilly Jane, she's been around for quite quite a while um at least since like 2008 i want to say i want to say since the beginning of ravelry at least she's been around because i remember one of the first patterns i looked at on ravelry was a spilly jane pattern yeah she does some really really cool stuff um and most of it is mittens although mm -hmm. she does have socks and some other patterns as well um she is really known for her gorgeous gorgeous yeah. mittens I like the layout of this book. It starts with um, 
like she does designer tips. It starts off with uh, introduction and then it goes into everything you need to know about knitting right. her mittens. And like there's these designer tips throughout. So this one is from rec recommended yarns that are good for mittens, like because these are all fingering weight mittens mm -hmm. that have a nice array of colors for color work. And Br Brooklyn Tweed Loft, Knit Picks Palette, Sunday Yarns Eden, which I've never even heard that of. must be an indie, yeah. Jameson and Smith, and then they're both their jumper weight and their spin drifts, and then Quigu. Yeah. So there's a lot more than that out there. Um, like the Loopy U has their solid series that would be perfect for this as well. But those are the ones that she recommends. Then she goes into a tutorials section, which gives you two different thumbs, but the pleasant thumb, and it teaches you the techniques using a photo tutorial. Yeah, so the peasant thumb is essentially an afterthought thumb. Yep, and then the gusset thumb is typically what I prefer. And that creates a small gusset. Um, if you look at these mitts, if I pull them out, gusset thumbs, you see this V that's created? Mm -hmm. That's created through increases. Um, so there's more, when you put them on, um, there's more fabric created for your, like, the bulky part of your thumb. Right. So, so if peasant mittens, if you were to lay it flat, the the afterthought thumb would be here on the bottom, whereas the um, gusset thumb or the sore thumb, she also calls it, it actually comes out of the side versus being knit into the underside. So this is the peasant thumb or the afterthought thumb, mm -hmm. and this is the first pattern. It's just a simple striped mitt pattern. And then the gusset thumb, and everything's charted. Like, she doesn't say switch colors every 10 rows. Mm -hmm. It's charted out. Um, there's the gusset thumb coming off the side. Right. And this is actually the only pattern in the book where the gusset thumb is written out um, into the, the pattern. She yep. talks um, in the beginning about how you can convert the patterns to a gusset thumb, but she doesn't do that for you in the book. Um, she does give you instructions on how, but she's designed all of these with the afterthought or peasant thumb in the pattern. So the majority of these patterns, well, all of them, I believe, are color work, um, whether it be stripes mm -hmm. or other color work. The very first pattern is a simple color work pattern, and that is nougat. Mm -hmm. And you can do all these patterns. She tells you how to do them as both... Um, mittens or fingerless mitts yeah. so she gives the modifications for both um nice big charts um they're all color charts so but they're they take up an entire page and they're actually separated let me see if i can do by this size yeah way. the secret sauce by size but it also tells you these stitches are a needle one these stitches are a needle two mm -hmm. so that they're written for dpns but of course, you could easily convert it. But I like the fact that, that she tells you this is the end of needle one. So yeah. you can, but you can set markers if you're doing it magically for another way um, in those repeats there. So you know which one as you go. My tablet's still trying to keep up. I need to Nice um, close-up shot. So there are multiple pictures of each. The second pattern is Midtown, which is more of like an art deco pattern. Yeah. Using two colors, the blue and the white. Um, both the mittens are sized in both a women's medium and large, but you could easily change the gauge if you wanted to, to change the size. If you wanted larger or smaller, you could change your gauge a little bit. Yeah, and oh. she does talk in the beginning about, since um, these are all color work of one kind or another, she does address how best to hold your yarn in order to get, um, to make sure that the background and the foreground colors really pop the way that they're supposed to. So she does address that, and she does um. very reasonably tell you that even if it seems scary, it's just stocking net knitting. That's all it is. You're just using more than one color. So I think my favorite pattern in the entire book is Under the Hostas because there is gnomes. And I love her introduction to this. It's very funny. So mm -hmm. it says, hello and welcome to Gnome Watch. Here at Gnome Watch, we are dedicated to ensuring your safety in the presence of, while not malign, still really nosy, and rather irritating, gnomes. 
Gnomes are mostly harmless and mostly well-meaning, but there's just something about, say, an open tub of cinnamon butter that your average gnome cannot resist having a tread through. Yes, that's where those greasy cinnamon-scented footprints came from. It's not their fault. They were born this way. When not trotting through condiments, gnomes can usually be found hanging out under a nice leafy clump of hostas in the garden. You've been warned. So lots of, like, tongue-in-cheek humor with this book. Yeah, sort of biography on the pattern. Yeah. Um, I I like that she pulls her inspiration from so many random places. Like, she doesn't stick to kitsch. Like, gnomes are very kitsch. Yes. And, you know, she talks about in the beginning how you can express your individuality in small items like mittens with gnomes on them and nobody uh-huh. looks at you crazy whereas if you were to have like a whole coat <laughs> a of gnome gnomes, sweater <laughs> that might come yeah. off as a little crazy so she she talks about how that um really plays into what she designs um the next pattern is codfish which i really like for its simplicity yes um, so it's got a very simple wave pattern at the top along with fish at the bottom i would probably change this by adding more ribbing Uh, it doesn't really have enough for me but aside from that i really like the. i would change it from white to a different color like easily could change out colors oh yeah oh yeah and the patterns are there's um plenty of contrast to make that um easier you know if you were to change out the the color the charts like even with the light pink of the gnome faces she makes it a dark pink in the chart so you can really really Mm -hmm. see it Next is cupcake mittens. Yeah, this is these are one of my favorites of her patterns, um, and I really she uh, another thing that she mentions in the beginning is that um, when you're work, working with so many colors, so in this particular pattern you have one, two, three, four, five colors, um, along with the uh, main color. No, five, six, seven, eight, nine colors. I'm sorry. Yeah, there's a lot. So she talks about in the beginning about how, you know, weaving in your ends. But she also addresses for items where you have so many colors going on that you can sort of gather um, areas where you have little, you know, like clumps of ends and braid them together and then sort of weave in the braid so it's less work. And I thought that's kind of genius, actually. Yeah. (laughs) I do. I, you're weaving through the floats, probably. Right. Anyway, mm-hmm. so yeah, yeah, you're weaving on the inside. But it's less work if you braid it first and then mm-hmm. pull it through. That's a lot less work. There is Decadence, which is an Art Nouveau-inspired pattern. Yeah, and so she talks about the inspiration for this, um, which is 19th century vice. So it, in the patterning are poppy pods um, and absinthe spoons. Mm-hmm. So it's all about... You um, only live once. Yeah. That's what she said. Vice in the 19th century. So, again, she pulls inspiration from some of the most random places. Um, the next two patterns are probably... Petoskey. My... Yes, I really love the simplicity of this. I love uh, Petoskey stones. I don't know what that is. Um, is. They're like fossils that wash up on the shore of Lake Michigan. Okay. You're not supposed to collect them anymore. It's like been banned. Oh. But when we were young, we could. So my friends had a summer place in Sleepy Bear Dunes, so we would go, and you can collect the Petoskey stones. And I actually have stitch markers that were sold at a yarn shop near there oh. that have Petoskeys. When you, you don't see them when they're dry, but when they're wet, you can see the fossils in them. Oh, neat. Yep. Um, there are ancient coral beds in Lake Michigan. That's pretty fancy. They're fancy. I love, see, now I want to knit those for Mama Linneman because she will appreciate those and really like them. Um, the next is, um, this isn't the one I thought it was, but the next is the girl with the prefabricated heart. Um, and the inspiration from that comes from a, very 19... a song that comes from a 1947 um, movie, I think. Plastic originally appears in yeah. surrealist film. Yes, so it's based on a song from a movie in 1947, mm-hmm. um, and it's Oh Venus was About born out of sea foam. Line. Venus was born out of brine, but the goddess today, if she is grade A, is assembled upon the assembly line. So it talks about sort of mass production of beauty. 
I like yeah. the penguin mitts too. <laughs> I'm totally skipping ahead. <laughs> I do like the penguin mitts. So, you, so you've cute. got this whole like idealism of feminism and obje objectivity, and then the next pattern is and penguins. Laura's like, like penguins mitts. <laughs> it's very <laughs> random. I love it though. I yeah. love the randomness. I There's something too. for everyone. I, I like it as well. I can't complain. Um, and then uh, the next one. These are the, the other ones that I really like. Uh, Abney Park. And this yes. is based off of a cathedral. Victorian cemetery. Yeah, inside of um, London. I got a chapel, not a cathedral. And it's got several different geometric elements, but they all work together really well. That reminds me of the Memphis uh, Metalwork Gate. Yes, the gate. Mm-hmm. I really, I, love, I like the different elements of this and how they come together. I think she did a really great job on that. Um, and then there's wheat fields. Mm -hmm. And this, she talks about um, the harvest season where she lives yeah. and how you drive through fields of wheat and the inspiration that she pulled for that as well. So that's um, 11 patterns in the book. And she gives you a lot of information in the beginning about the general construction of mittens, how to make it successful for you, um, the using fingering weight is your best bet if you're doing color work, using 100% wool is your best bet versus superwash because um, when 100% wool actually gets um, damp, it gets warmer, like um, the way that the insulation of the, the double layer. The scales are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So again, and in the back, it's got blank charts mm -hmm. for you to so design your own. So that your own, you have to print off that page, take a screenshot, and print off that page, and go to town. Yep. So that is Spilly Jane Mittens by Spilly Jane. That was again sent to us from the lovely people at Cooperative Press. Yes. Yep. And you can get your own copy. I think it's sixteen bucks if you do a digital download through Ravelry. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right, we do have a question. I'm not. I have an idea of how to answer this, but I, this was more one that I thought we could crowdsource to other people. Oh, okay. So this one is from KY Spinner, and she says, "Hello, ladies. My spinning, knitting, weaving group, which is so cool that you have one of those, mm -hmm. is planning a stash swap, and was wondering if anyone has any suggestions on how to set it up. We have thrown out a few ideas at this point, but since there could be fiber, yarn, cones, etc." We have not come up with a way to say you brought two 100 gram skeins and four ounces of fiber to trade so you can take X amount of new stash. Help anyone? So what I would just do is a one for one. Like you brought one item, you get to take one item. Like that's that's a, a very simple way to do way it. To do it. You um, could also sort the tables like you're bringing, you know, you could set them by amount. Like this is worth this amount. You could put down one thing into this category. You get to take one thing from there. I think you could but also think, do like um, sort of a set a general value on what you've brought in. Say you bring in a skein of sock yarn and you say, you know, okay, this is a $20 item roughly. You could do Monopoly money. Is that what you're going to say? Well, something to that effect, yeah. Yes. And so everything has got a general price on it, and you can sort of take out the equivalent of what you put in. But, I mean, I think in the end... It's stuff that you're wanting to get rid of anyways. Yeah, but also, I've done... We've done a lot of swaps and events where we've organized a bunch of women together to do things. And I, I don't mean to say just women, but it's generally mostly women. And for me, I think the best way to go to not step on toes or offend people is just to go with the honor system, honestly. That's what I would do. I'm not saying that's what you should do. I don't know how big your group is or how like um, fluid the members are. Or maybe some people only come to the Christmas thing because they want to participate in the swap or what have you. But... I would probably just do honor system because it's easier and you don't have to manage it. Yeah. But, um, We've done before um, the Memphis Knitting Guild does one where they bid like it's an auction. Like yeah. You put in your stuff and you get the money that people bid. Like. And it all goes. Well, you could do that. Yeah, I think that would be a great idea because you could put all. I mean, you'd have to be willing to donate it versus swap. But then well, all no, the money you can... have your name on the thing, and then you get whatever money got earned from it. Oh, okay. I was going to say, like, like, if it's a crafting, like, group, 
then they could put all the money back into the group and like hire yeah, a teacher or get too. an outing or something like that. That would be super cool. But I you like have to be I... willing to donate versus swap. So. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, those are all interesting. And then um, because we are, don't know everything, if anyone... <laughs> don't know anything. <laughs> um, if anyone has an, an idea to share, please put it in the episode thread for this week so that we can share even more information. Yes. So, um, what are you reading? All right, so I'm going to put this link in here. And I'm going to put it in there with the um, disclaimer that you're grown-ups, so if you don't like it. And um, if you're under 18, you should probably yes, not. This is, these are so. These are adults. Some of the books that I read contain things that aren't appropriate for people under 18. Um, one of them is a series that, uh, it's three books, and it's male-male romance, so if that's not your thing, that's totally fine. Um, but this particular trilogy is, I liked it a lot. I, I mean, it, it had a lot of story to it, but it also has a lot of graphic details to it. So if that's not your thing, totally fine. But if it is, I'm going to link it. It's um, by it's author. Erotica spectrum versus just the romance spectrum. Yeah, no, this is definitely riding the line. <laughs> um, this is by an author called Ella Frank. Um, and it's, the first book is called Try. There's two more, but... Um, yeah, that it, it took up a couple of nights. It was very good. And then I'm still listening to Voyager, which is the third in the um, Outlander series. So now, spoilers, by the way. Um, so now Claire's back. So she's, she's back in like... She's back, she's in 19, or no, 1760-something. Okay. And her and Jamie are, like, in their 40s? Yes. Okay. And they've reunited. They haven't been back together, but, like, a week and a half. And already... Something terrible's gonna happen. <laughs> they're already on the run because his bootlegging business, which was under the guise of a printing business, something happened, and um, now the, whatever they're called, officers are after him. Because he's doing things he shouldn't with his bootlegging. He's not paying taxes on right? and, um Or he's importing his stuff he shouldn't or something like that. Gotcha. But, uh, so she, they've already been on the run from that. Visited a um, body house. Hmm. Um, picked up a Chinaman. Um, and they went back to Lollybrook. They're which very is, busy. Which is his home. And were surprised in the middle of an intimate act by his wife coming in. Oh. Spoiler, his wife is the same person who convinced her to go to the town in the first book and got her caught and nearly burned as a witch. So Ooh. that's been fun. Um, <laughs> this book is so I know, awesome. it's so crazy and ridiculous. Um... And then she, uh, the wife shot Jamie, and he's running a fever, yes, he and he's going to die. But Claire left because she was mad, so that's where we yes, are now. <laughs> There's your weekly Outlander update. Oh, my. What about you? What are you reading? I'm still listening to First Grave on the Right. Um, I am still reading The Aeronauts Windless by Jim Butcher. I'm enjoying it. There is a cat character that is Humber. Yeah, you sent me a, a little excerpt of it, the way it was written. I love it. It's it's really, um, I like the way Jim Butcher writes. He's also the author of The Dresden Files, and then he had another fantasy series. Yeah, it was, Humber. um... It was the, oh my goodness, Kobe listened to all six books, the Fury like, series. So it was yeah. like the Princeps Fury, the um, Academ's Fury, all that. It was a Fury series. Um, so I really like the way he writes. It reminds me a little bit of Anne McCaffrey, this one. Like she's got a Crystal Singer trilogy and it's a little bit, I don't know, just the fact that they have crystals that power ships reminds me of that a little bit. Um, I read three kids' books this week. Mm -hmm. I read Moon Penny Island by Trisha Stub 
spring stub. Um, it was okay. It reminded me of some of the Penderwicks, but not as well written. I, I just didn't like... I liked the plot, and I liked the concept. I did not care for her writing style, especially. Yeah, I can... I, that's... I've gotten to the point now where I won't buy a book unless I've downloaded the sample and can stand the way the author writes. That's true. Um, and then I read a graphic novel called Nothing Can Possibly Go Wrong. So Moon Penny Island's definitely like fifth, sixth grade-ish. Nothing Can Possibly Go Wrong, like upper high school. It's a graphic novel, but it does involve... Um, so it's kind of like Revenge of the Nerds. The robotics team and the cheerleaders both want the same money. The cheerleaders want it for a new uniform, and the robotics team wants to go up to this robotics competition. So the principal says the person, the student council, will decide where the money goes. So they decide to run for student council president. So it's the head of the robotics team, and then it's a head basketball player who gets roped in by his girlfriend, who's a cheerleader, who's best friends with the robotics guy, and so um, he's also, his parents have kind of gone through like a nasty divorce. So there's that sideline, but it's pretty funny. It's a good graphic novel, but it's definitely upper high school. Um, so that involves like drinking and there's cussing and some other stuff, but it's, it's good. I enjoyed it. I sent my, like I bought it for my library. Actually, mm -hmm. I did this. I use Junior Library Guild to purchase a lot of books, and so I got other librarians to subscribe to it because it's awesome and I like it a lot. And um, they sent me five books per person who subscribed, so oh. I got to pick the books. But that one I kind of knew was more high school, but I was like, it's free. Yeah, I can see. And then if it's not for me, I'll send it up to the high school. Right. So that's what ended up happening with that. Um, I need to ask her if she actually got it. And then the best book. How the War Saved My Life. So this is on the possible Newberry selection. Like, everyone right now is doing their Newberry picks. Mm -hmm. and their ALA award picks. So it's kind of on that radar. It was so freaking good. I hope it wins. Like, it's my pick of what I've read so far. Um, but I haven't read, like, the top three that people have been talking about. But it is so, so good. It is about a girl who is growing up in the slums of London in the 1940s, and she is in a very abusive situation. Her mom is very physically abusive to her, and she's got a club foot, which could have been healed by an operation when she was a baby, which hmm. she doesn't know this, but her mom wouldn't put forth the money. So her mom locks her in this apartment all day long, and she's never allowed to leave, and she's got a younger brother who can go everywhere. And so she sits in the window waving at people, and then um, World War II happens, and the children are evacuated, yeah. and her mom tells her, you're not going anywhere. You can, if the building gets bombed, you can die in it, basically. And so before this, unbeknownst to her mom, she had taught herself to walk, because she's always crawled. She's 10 years old, and she's always crawled her entire life, and she teaches herself to walk. And so she and her brother walk to the train station and she's one of the children that's sent to the countryside and they are adopted by someone who who's has issues of her own um but they are kind of like the last kids and no one wants them because they're dirty they're in rags no one wants these kids it's evident that they've got problems and so they're sent to live with this woman it's very bed knobs and broomsticks in that you know they're leaving london and they're kind of unwanted kids that have been living on the street and uh, it just, it's how the war saved her life. So it's really, really good. And what I really like about it is it's not like, oh, they're sent to the countryside. Everything's perfect. It still goes, like, her yeah. brother has night terrors every night. She has, like, her mom won't respond to letters from the woman who takes them in. So they she's not allowed to get the surgery on her foot. Like, it's a slow transition and progression as a, as two characters. And I really, really enjoyed it. It's really good. Um definitely go get it i would say it's appropriate i mean know your kid because it does have abuse in it so if that's something that your child's sensitive to that might not be the best pick but it's so good it's great historical fiction and i'm not a historical realistic fiction person but i've been on a kick and every single one for the newberry selection it seems like um the possibilities are very sad and tragic so this kind of went along with that. It's like very sad or tragic or girl books. 
sometimes that's the way it goes you know and that's the way it goes but it's gonna be interesting to see um how it shakes out this year this is gonna be one of the most exciting there's so many good books yeah. on the new selection radar this year so it's gonna be really interesting to see what gets chosen and i've been talking about that like becca and i have been talking about it a lot but i also watched a webinar on it this week so it's definitely on my radar Cool. We have a pom pom death match. Are you ready? I am. I want to know who the winner of the pom pom okay. cage match is. So there were three. I got. I, I ordered from Amazon because there's no one local to me that sells these. Um, Joanne Fabrics does not. So these are all available from Amazon.com. Although some are out, and I set them out for my knit group Wednesday night so that they could look at them too. And the winner by far is the Bernat pom-pom. Not only does it come with the best packaging, but it is the fluffiest. Get it out. Oh my god. <laughs> it is the largest. It feels the best, and it is the fluffiest. Um, it is the most expensive, so this one was around $10. It is solid, as you can see. So is it like like fun fur? Like what No, is... it's, it's nicer than that. It's a faux fur. Okay. Um... So it's nice and soft. It's kind of, it's got almost like a tennis, like a foam ball in the middle. Mm -hmm. um, so it's squishy. The only thing that we did not like about this, so it's 85% acrylic and 15% polyester um, made in China. The ties are not like, they're these little threads. Mm -hmm. So it's a bunch of little threads. Oh, so it's like um, embroidery floss. Yes. So it's a like embroidery floss that you would, kind of tie through and so on so that's the first one and this comes in a bunch of, like you can buy hot pink you can buy all the neutrals so this one comes in a bunch of different colors all of these i'm finding as i play with them like need additional fluffing or like they might have a glue spot on them so you kind of have to really go through and play a little bit if you want I... your pom-pom to be the prettiest it can be yes um so that's the first one and that's around ten dollars the second one was actually the Premier. This one also has the thread. It comes on a card like that. These are two for like $5. It's not as full. It's not as fluffy. But it will do the job. It's also acrylic and polyester. And then the last one would be the Lion Brand. The Lion Brand one. So this was like two for five. This was around $2. So very similar price. The thing that I do like. So this one's a lot smaller. So for your smaller faux fur pom-pom needs, it's not as fluffy. Um, you would really have to fluff it up, but it has this elastic on the back. So you can pop it through and the elastic kind of oh, holds. Yeah, so I cool. do like the elastic like hair band. So you could just, and it gives you directions on how to put it through. So those are the three that I found. The nap on those doesn't seem proportional like, it looks like the, the fur, or whatever you want to call it, is too long for the size of the ball. Especially on that smallest one. For the triple? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, this one I would use more on, like, a kid's hat, I think. Versus, but you can tell the... Yeah. For now, I think, is well worth the extra 7 or $8. Hmm. Even though it's got the lame tie. And I, I'm thinking that there's other ones that are sold in uh, yarn shops. But I don't have a local yarn shop anymore, which makes me sad. I know House of Yarn sells them. I should have picked one up when I was there, but I did not. I didn't realize that we were going to do a faux pom-pom deathmatch. Deathmatch <laughs> of doom. So that are, those are like my pom-pom deathmatch things. Results. So there's the three. There's the Burnett, which would be the winner around ten dollars then the premiere which was like two for five and then lion brand which would be suitable for a child's hat which would be smaller but i do like the elastic on that one i wish the other one said that so we have a giveaway it is the authentic collection yep by hohi locatelli i am going to go ahead and close that one we have 215 entries thank you all for being patient i had to um create that one on my phone which just because 
this week was crazy again. All right, so you, it band, was choir concerts. Two Ooh. and what was the number? Two to two hundred and fifteen. Two hundred and fifteen. Someone must have posted twice. There's two hundred and fourteen voices, or someone deleted one. Okay, so I have not pushed the button. Push the button. Number twenty-one. Awesome. That's the first page. Mm -hmm. Number 21 is Fitter Knitter. I know her. She does the calendar every year. Um, and she says that April Shawl is lovely. She does a calendar that, um, the calendar of hope. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So she does, um, different, like, designs. It's kind of like a, I want to say almost like a dishcloth or not dishcloth, but like block calendar. And, um, all the proceeds go to breast cancer research. So cool. Um, so Fitter Knitter, just send myself or Leslie a PM and we will get that hooked up. We'll hook you up with Hohi. Oh, beans. Yes. Oh, and we have another giveaway. So we Laura, do. Laura talked about um, the new needles that she got from Knitter's Pride. Yes. And they sent me a set of crochet hooks. And while well, they are absolutely lovely. They're I don't crochet enough to justify keeping them so I figured what I would do instead was offer them as a giveaway um, because we do have a lot of people who crochet enough that you know these would have a good home so why don't you show a little so those are the symphony rose crochet hooks right and they are made out of rosewood and they come in this really nice box and they have um, there's a spot for each size and they, they have little Swarovski crystals on the end um, and they come in a size um, E, which is a four, it's a three and a half millimeter, up to L, which is 11 or eight millimeter. So they come in this nice padded box. Like um, white velvet. Yeah, it's really nice. I mean, it's a really nice set. I just don't, I don't crochet enough to justify keeping them. So um, what we're going to do is do a giveaway in the group um, for this. I would ask not to enter unless you actually crochet. Or you could give them to someone who does actually crochet. Because I would like them to get used. Um, so we'll do um, a giveaway in the group. I'll open that at the same time as <laughs> when I put the thread up. And I'll just ask what your favorite Knitter's Pride product is. Because they, they have a lot of great products. I use their blocking mm -hmm. pins a lot. I they're, love their little because they're they they look like a comb almost so you can do several at once and it really you know when you want to square something up it's a they're really great um, so I'll do a giveaway in the group for these uh, rosewood crochet hooks um, oh here's the blocking pins the knit blockers yes those are awesome yeah so I'm not so, giving and they these come away. in different sizes yeah there's the half ones and then the full ones. And they basically have little straight pins in them. And you use that to um, gather and block out your... That's how I blocked um, the hand spun shawl that I finished. Yeah. And they, they come in this little case that's got foam at the bottom. So they mm -hmm. stay. They're not going to fall out. So. Anyhow. What else? So, coming events, I'll be at DFW the end of March 1st week in April. Leslie will be at Vogue Knitting Live, which is in January. Mid-January, yep. Um, I am obsessed with the Great British Bake Off. I love the Great British anything. Like They do a sewing one, too, right? They do. Yeah, I haven't watched it since the first season, but I think they're on, like, their four. I want all the tea. Like, my sister is also obsessed with the Great British Bake Off. And you can watch the first season on Netflix, but then all the seasons are on YouTube. And um, we are going to try to find a place in Knoxville that does like a high tea. Oh, that'd be fun. Because we will be together at Christmas time in Knoxville. So I'm super excited. But um, I yeah, want to see Matt at high tea. I don't know that Matt. With his do not bend finger. <laughs> I don't know that Matt will be attending high tea, but oh. he might. I don't know. I think he would rock it. He would rock it. That's not the question. The question is, does he want to rock it? <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, so that is what's going on in my life. You have 2016 goals, spin your get, bin, monthly sock yes. club. 
So um, I'm in a couple of different text groups and I always feel like a slacker because I really don't contribute to them very much. I just feel like I'm, I'm a voyeur. I just read what everybody else writes mostly. Um, and so there's one group with Laura and Jessica, Show Me Your Knits, and Lynn, Lynn Zim, and myself. Uh-huh. Um, which, I, and with iPhones, you can title your group messages now. <laughs> so we're the alpha spinners, when in reality, I, I don't spin enough to even be like a theta spinner. But <laughs> um, So Jessica and Lynn have really been pushing each other this year with spin your bin yes which is a cta um which is completely um, twisted and arbitrary it's a group yep. on ravelry it's in their spinning group mm-hmm. and so they did this thing i don't know if last year was the first year or the second no it's the second year yeah and so um basically at the beginning of the year you have up to a certain date to um get a picture and set a goal of um, what you want to... You have to put all these braids of fiber in a bin. Right. And... And, and declare that you're going to spend X amount yes. in 2016 or And one of the things can be if you don't spend your bin, what you don't spend gets put into the general prize pool. You can opt yeah. to do that or you can just opt to spin your bin. Yeah. And um, so Jess and Lynn have really been pushing... Lynn, I, I want to say this for the record, because if I don't, Jess will be disappointed. Jess finished her bin already. It's she did. been done. It but... was like 10, 10 pounds, I think, total. Yeah, this year that she spun. And then Lynn did 11 pounds. And she oh, still got three okay. braids to go. Well, yes. she started one of them. So she's got two plus a partial to she spin. She did her flying on her third day. Yeah, so... Um... They're really, and they've accomplished a lot because they set that out as a goal, right? Um, uh-huh. So there's that, and then some people do like their own little monthly sock club where they take. Yeah, Desert Vista Dye Works does like where you knit one of hers mm-hmm. every month, and she's got like awesome prizes too. But there's people um, that do their own personal. Yeah. Yeah. So their, like, like I know Eileen did for a long yeah. time, yeah, um, where she'll just grab 12 skeins of yarn, put them in a paper bag each, and label them with a the month. And so. You know, when March 2016 comes around, she just opens the bag and knits whatever is in there um, as a way to sort of set goals. And Mm -hmm. I have shied away from setting too many goals or or obligations on myself because that tends to sort of stifle my desire to actually do it. Yeah. But I'm considering doing the bin next year yeah, should. and doing so, I mean very low key something I know I can accomplish just like 12 braids you know yeah I just think that's the minimum is 12 braids because I can spin and I can spin well and quickly but I just rarely make the time to do it so, I think they have to be like three ounce braids yeah too. Well, I would do that and I would put at least two fiber optics in there because I love just buying her stuff and collecting it, yeah. but it takes forever to spin it because I like to do it, you know, thin and get yeah. a good yardage out of it. So no, I think that's a great plan. I'm I think considering it. And I would, I would like to see is people um, in the thread sort of tell me how they set their goals, their crafting goals for the year. Are there yeah. like groups they use on Ravelry? Is there um, some process that they just sort of, handle on their own and if so how do you keep yourself accountable because i would totally not if it was just something i was doing internally um i'm just i'm curious as how other people set their goals and does it actually help you meet the goal or does it just put uh, like obligation on you you know do you want to just have it in the thread or do you want to do like a prize giveaway with it so we could give some patterns away or do you just want... Let's do it. Yeah, let's do a giveaway thread. And let's okay. just make it a surprise. Okay. What the prize will be. Because I have a couple Ooh. things I can throw in. A surprise prize. A surprise the best prize. kind of prize is a surprise. surprise. Um, yeah, I think that's a good idea. Why can we, we can make a separate thread for that. Awesome. Um, you can be in charge of that. Oh, yes, you. Thank you. I get to start with three <laughs> threads tonight. That's fantastic. <laughs> that's going to be super fun for you. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I'm I'm just interested to see how other people do it. And I have no desire to start something like knit girls based for no. we have enough to going on. And there's already great groups that that do Oh it. yeah, we can point you to other great groups yeah. who do wonderful things. I, I don't like, want to I don't think it. we need we no. do stash dash, which I think is Yeah. 
along with the Halloween craft, all the things, and yeah, we might need to add some spring. something for the spring. We do SSK knit alongs, but you know that's only a small percentage of people that do SSK. So, um, another gigantic, huge, enormous thank you to all of our Patreon supporters. Yes, thank you all so much. Um, for anyone that doesn't know, Patreon is a way that you can subscribe to donate X amount per episode. Um, you can do as little as a dollar. And um, we every single dollar is appreciated um, very much. We're trying to work towards um, covering travel costs to go out and check out a retreat area for the spring. So yep. I think the um, spinning prize for this month will be some coarse fun Christmas lights. That would be great. Hmm. You're so fancy. That'll be my contribution this month. You're so fancy. I don't know that I'm fancy. I'll even put batteries in them for you. Oh, that would be a cool, like, decoration for a small area, you know? Like, yeah, they're like on an my office mantle. desk or like my mantle has them or something, now. yeah. Yep. So, okay. My tree is about to get some. I think we're done. I think so, too. Do you have anything else? No, I need to go knit sweaters for animals because my life's not ridiculous. Tiny sweaters. <laughs> Tiny trees. Okay, well, you guys have a lovely week, and we will see you again next weekend. Bye, Bye y'all.